Park by Sea, our East Dock facility will be your first experience of Jurassic Park. As you disembark from your luxury cruise liner, you will be met by our friendly and knowledgeable tour guides who will take you aboard VIP transportation to our visitor center where your Jurassic adventure will begin. And for those of you that arrive by air, our heliport is located at the foot of a 360-foot high waterfall. Our heliport offers the fastest way to visit Jurassic Park. Arrive in style from nearby Costa Rica and take advantage of our Terrasar's Eye View tour of the park's spectacular coast. Coming up ahead is our multi-level visitor center. This is where you'll begin your prehistoric adventure. The central rotunda displays the fossilized remains of creatures we have brought back from extinction through the science of genetic engineering. They are a reminder of a past where we could only look at the bones of the now living, breathing creatures of Jurassic Park. state-of-the-art technology delivers an experience like no other as you visit the actual labs and hatchery where the animals of the park are created and born. The visitor center also offers fine dining at our restaurant Les Cigantes. And don't forget to visit the gift shop where you can find all your Jurassic Park merchandise. If you wish to purchase some merchandise, head towards the visitor center with your visitor pass. In these labs, we extract DNA fragments from fossilized insects and regenerate them to dinosaurs. The science of all of this is a little complicated, so in order to help you better understand the process we want to create dinosaurs, Mr. Harriman has prepared a special guest to explain it all to you. Mr. DNA? A DNA strand like me is a blueprint for building a living thing. And sometimes animals that went extinct millions of years ago, like dinosaurs, left their blueprints behind for us to find. We just had to know where to look. A hundred million years ago, there were mosquitoes, just like today. And just like today, they fed on the blood of animals, even dinosaurs. Sometimes, after biting a dinosaur, the mosquito would land on the branch of a tree and get stuck in the sap. After a long time, the tree sap would get hard and become fossilized, just like a dinosaur bone, preserving the mosquito inside. This fossilized tree sap, which we call amber, waited for millions of years with the mosquito inside until Jurassic Park scientists came along. Using sophisticated techniques, they extract the preserved blood from the mosquito and, bingo, dino DNA. A full DNA strain contains three billion genetic codes. If we looked at strains like these once a second for eight hours a day, it'd take two years to look at the entire DNA strain. It's that long. Six or so, it's full of holes. Now that's where our geneticists take over. Thinking machine supercomputers and gene sequencers break down the strand in minutes. And virtual reality displays show our geneticists the gaps in the DNA sequence. We use the complete DNA of a frog to fill in the holes and complete the code. <gasps> and now we can make a baby dinosaur. With our cutting-edge technology, we provide a one-of-a-kind private safari tour experience of Jurassic Park. No expense has been spared on our custom fleet of Jeeps and sustainable electric SUVs outfitted bumper-to-bumper -bumper with the latest in technology. 
Sit back and relax while listening to our interactive CD-ROM tour program. During most of your tour, the appropriate information will be automatically selected and displayed for you. Simply touch the area of the screen displaying the appropriate icon. Please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Welcome to Jurassic Park. now entering the lost world of the prehistoric past, a world with creatures long gone from the face of the earth, which you are privileged to see for the first time. To the right, you will see a herd of the first dinosaurs on our tour, called Dilophosaurus. One of the earliest carnivores, we now know Dilophosaurus is actually poisonous, spitting its venom at its prey, causing blindness and eventually paralysis allowing the carnivore to eat at its pleasure. This makes Dilophosaurus a beautiful but deadly addition to Jurassic Park. Coming up on your right again is our Proceratosaurus paddock. It's a small carnivorous dinosaur. It comes from the mid-Jurassic period. It has similar features of the larger carnivore, Ceratosaurus, like, for example, the horn on his nose. Proceratosaurus is a small but important part of Jurassic Park. out either side of the vehicle, you will see many dinosaurs known as Compsognathus. They are often referred to simply as a copy, which is a chicken-sized dinosaur from the late Jurassic period, around 150 million years ago. It was first discovered in Germany before the only other specimen to be found was unearthed in France. Copies typically hunt small lizards and insects, but like other opportunistic theropods, will scavenge larger animal carcasses when available. Please, do not feed them. Dinosaurs, a miraculous feat of bioengineering, a 
central control, our nerve center for the entire site. Every creature is monitored on a continual basis. Nothing is left to chance. And in the field, our park rangers are constantly watching the area, communicating directly with central control at all times, and patrolling the site to ensure guests comfort and safety. And at the boat launching area, that's uh, where you're heading. Each and every boat is in continual radio contact with the home base and central control as well. So now prepare yourselves for the adventure of a lifetime as you journey into the world of the dinosaurs on a Jurassic Park of the World Adventure. I guarantee you, nothing has prepared you for the adventure ahead. So from all of us, to all of you, well, thanks for coming. And have a wonderful day at Jurassic Park! Watch your step as you board the boat and continue quickly across to the opposite side to allow room for those behind you. Stow hats, glasses, cameras, and other belongings securely. For your own safety, please remain seated with your hand and arms inside the boat at all times. Thank you and enjoy your journey. Straight ahead is the largest dinosaur in Jurassic Park. Brachiosaurus is a large sauropod dinosaur that originally lived in what is now Africa and North America during the late Jurassic period, 150 to 140 million years ago. Our Brachiosaurus represent an average sized specimen of the largest land animals to have ever lived. They are herd animals that move in family groups, much like modern elephants and feed off the tops of trees. We let them walk freely on the southern part of the island. Please, turn off the flash of your camera while taking photos of this dinosaur. Now, on your left, you can see our Stegosaurus grazing in the fields of their habitat. They are known to the plates on their back sharp spikes on their tail, and that they had two brains. Stegosaurus is 14 feet tall and 30 feet long. The spikes on their tail were used for defense against the predator. Stegosaurus is a herbivore and one of our most beautiful dinosaurs in Jurassic Park.
150 million years ago, the mighty Allosaurus reigned as a dominant predator of the Jurassic period, originally preying upon ornithopods, stegosaurids, and sauropods. One of the first dinosaurs to have been discovered, its plentiful fossilized remains have been meticulously studied by those in the field of paleontology. Cephalosaurus, a thick-headed lizard from Cretaceous North America, is a bipedal herbivore best known for the remarkable 25-centimeter deep dome that grows on top of its head. The thick bony dome that crowns the skull of Pachycephalosaurus not only protects the brain, but allows it to offensively inflict a powerful headbutt without sustaining an injury itself. The hollow crest on the back of the Corythosaurus skull functions as an incredible resonating chamber, amplifying their marvelous calls and allowing them to communicate across great distances. The beak of the Corythosaurus is rather shallow and delicate. In the late Cretaceous, this herbivore would have been a selective feeder, preferring to eat only the freshest fruits and softest leaves. Next, on your right, you can see our Stegosaurus paddock. It is about one and a half feet tall, one of the smallest dinosaurs on this tour. It's a meat scavenger and has a striking resemblance to the Compsognathus. It is a tiny addition to Jurassic Park. We are now entering the Jurassic Park area, where our pteranodons live and graze. It is one of the largest flying reptiles on the tour, with a wingspan of 15 feet. Pteranodon is found in North America, the Cretaceous period. It fed mainly on small animals and fish. One of the most iconic traits of the majestic pteranodon is the protruding skull crest. Straight and narrow, it angles back from the rear of the skull and aids the pterosaur when maneuvering in flight. We are now leaving the apiary to continue our tour. On your left is our Velociraptor pen. 
This 11-foot-long dinosaur lived during the early Cretaceous period, about 115 to 108 million years ago. An incredibly intelligent and fleet of foot pack hunter, credited with initiating the dinosaur renaissance during the 1960s, where the image of dinosaurs as slow, clumsy reptilian giants was superseded by an image of warm-blooded, fast-moving animals. In addition to problem-solving intelligence, one of Velociraptor's defining features is an oversized, sickle-shaped talon on each foot. These talons are used during hunting and combat to inflict deep and fatal wounds. We take extreme precaution to make sure they are always under control. This hardy Ornithischian is well equipped to fend off any threat. A strong sense of smell also allows it to quickly detect the presence of predators. Ankylosaurus's thick armor consists of large knobs and oval bone plates that form within the skin. In fact, we still see this today, typically in animals such as crocodiles, armadillos, and lizards. Coming up on your left, you will see one of the most popular dinosaurs on the tour, called Tyrannosaurus.
Tyrannosaurus is perhaps the best known dinosaur in the world, and for good reason. Standing over 13 feet tall at the hips, 40 feet from snout to the tip of its tail, and weighing around 7 tons, T-Rex was one of the largest carnivores ever to walk the earth. Its original home was North America during the late Cretaceous period, 67 to 65 million years ago, where it would stalk Triceratops among other prey. Tyrannosaurus has excellent binocular vision, and hence good depth perception, an adaptation essential to a predator. Despite this, observations have shown that T. rex's vision is primarily attuned to motion, supplemented by a remarkable sense of smell. Our living specimens have proven once and for all that T. rex was no slouch, reaching speeds of over 30 miles per hour. With no obvious defensive mechanisms, the Dryosaurus would have relied upon its agility and speed to flee from fearsome Jurassic predators, such as Ceratosaurus and Allosaurus. In addition to its teeth and a beak well suited to cropping vegetation, Dryosaurus also has pouch-like cheek structures that prevent the herbivore from losing food while it eats. Under the skin of Metriacanthosaurus lies a series of neural spines running along its back. This gives the dinosaur a slight hump, similar to that seen in the transatlantic theropod Acrocanthosaurus. A threatening predator from late Jurassic England, Metriacanthosaurus will typically tolerate the presence of smaller species, but can often become hostile towards other carnivores of its size.
Below the surface of North America's oceans lay one of the largest known species of Mosasaur, Tylosaurus. Its tremendous size granted it the status of apex predator, and given the chance, it would even target land-based dinosaurs. Not only were the puncturing teeth of the Tylosaurus a great threat to its fellow sea dwellers, but its elongated snout also posed a considerable danger to its prey, ramming its target at high speeds to stun it. even the earliest of dinosaurs were the prehistoric pelicosaurs. Synapsids, like Dimetrodon here, were once classified as reptiles, but are now regarded as proto-mammals. Beguiling, bewitching, and undeniably beautiful, the sail that adorns each Dimetrodon is an alluring showpiece that attracts the attention of anything or anyone that enters its territory. Triceratops is a large ceratopsian, that is, a horned and frilled herbivorous dinosaur that lived in the late Cretaceous period, 68 to 65 million years ago in North America. It filled an ecological niche similar to today's bison or American buffalo, roaming the grasslands and massive herds. Although an herbivore, it is one of the park's most dangerous animals, reaching nearly 30 feet in length and weighing up to 12 tons. Its size alone makes it for a formidable creature. Sporting a fiery temper and horns of over three feet in length, this is an animal well deserving serious respect in Jurassic Park. Edmontosaurus may not have a striking cranial crest like other species of large hadrosaur, but instead receives adoration for its toothless beak, with its mouth shaped similarly to that of a duck or a spoonbill. Although this bulky hadrosaur was widely distributed across western North America, Edmontosaurus was first discovered in southern Alberta, Canada, and named after the province's capital city, Edmonton. Mamenchosaurus is a colossal sauropod from the late Jurassic with a gigantic neck that ranks it among the tallest dinosaurs to have ever been recreated by genetic engineering. An enormous sauropod from China, Mamenchosaurus towers above almost all other species of dinosaur. Yet despite their astounding size, these majestic animals move with phenomenal grace.
To the right, in the distance, you will see a herd of Gallimimus grazing in the open field. Gallimimus originally lived during the late Cretaceous period, 75 to 65 million years ago. Similar to today's gazelle and animal, Gallimimus moved the herd in the range along the large grassland area. They will often move around on all four limbs when feeding, but find it just as easy to stand on two legs. In fact, they are excellent runners, reaching speeds in excess of 40 miles per hour. Thank you for joining us for a tour of Jurassic Park. We hope you have enjoyed it. Our tour vehicle will be taking you to either the visitor center, dock, or heliport. If you are going to the visitor center, please be certain you have your visitor pass around your neck when you arrive. If you are being dropped off at the heliport or dock for the trip home, we hope you join us again soon.